how beautiful the kingdom will be. Brakata Yahawa, Brakata Yahawa Shai, Brakata Yahawa, Brakata Yahawa Shai, Brakata Yahawa, Brakata Yahawa Shai, call Halala Yahawa Bashim Yahawa Shai. That's Hebrew. Interpret, bless Yahawa, bless Yahawa Shai. All praises to the Father Yahawa in the name of the Son Yahawa Shai. I want to give also double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching his word and sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, this is Revelations chapter 21. And this is John the Revelator, all right, having to see New Jerusalem. All right, now what is Jerusalem? Jerusalem is a people before a place. Okay, Jerusalem is a people before a place. And right now, Jerusalem is not in Jerusalem. Okay, because the Israelites, which are the 12 tribes, the lost 12 tribes of Israel, are scattered through the four corners of the earth. Okay, so the real Israelites, the real Jerusalem as a people is not in the land of Jerusalem. So anyway, this is Revelation chapter 21 verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. All right. So when it says heaven, earth is talking about earth. OK, you have um, three sorts of heaven. You have heaven. You have earth as a heaven. You have the space as a heaven. And you also have the fourth dimension where the heavenly father resides. And the spirits in Yahweh Shai that sits on the right hand of the Lord, that is also called heaven. All right. So it says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. All right. And that word new, I believe, is kainos. All right. Which means a refreshed earth. Matter of fact, let me um, go into the word new. Kainos. Yep. Yep. Kainos. Strong's G, 2537, Kainas, Kainas. All right, because when the Christians, the so-called Christians, when they read these scriptures and they read this particular verse, they think that the world we're in and there's going to be, uh, we're going to be living out of space somewhere in, in heaven. No, the most high created earth for the creatures and for us to live in. All right, and I'm going to get a quick precept to back that. Um, but, um, the word new is kainos as respects form recently made fresh. See, recently made fresh, recent, unused, unworn, just like when you on a computer and your page get frozen, you hit the refresh button to refresh the whole page. And that's what the Lord is going to do to the earth of a new kind Right. Recently made fresh. Unused. Because the earth, you know, the most high is going to design this earth to go back into the state it was from the very beginning. All right. When when um, King David even made mention about um, how it was um, it took two men to carry a cluster of grapes. All right. You know, apples are going to be bigger. Oranges are going to be bigger. You know, animals are going to be bigger. Okay, it says new, especially in freshness. All right. It's prop properly so with respect to age new. All right. So the most high is going to make new the earth. All right. What else they got here? Let's see. All right, anyway, so it says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth, which is kainos, a refreshed earth for the first heaven, which is now. And the first earth, which is now were passed away because what is going to bring this world to its demise? What is going to bring this society to its demise? The Third World War. All right. When Yahweh shall return. All right, this place in which you call America, which is known as Babylon the Great, which means great confusion, is going to be destroyed 
by the way of thermonuclear missiles and by the chariots by the lasers of the chariots as well all right so from here let me um get a quick precept because a lot of these so-called christians think the world will end all right that the whole world is going to end And this is Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 4. I start at 3. What profit have a man of all his labors? Excuse me. What profit have a man of all his labor which he had, which he taketh under the sun? One generation passeth away, and another generation cometh. But the earth abide forever. All right? Because even Solomon may mention, he said, everything under the sun is vanity. You know, you don't get the ticket with you after you die. You know, you leave your stuff, your family, your resources and things you possess in the earth for the next man. All right. So when one generation passes away, another generation come. It's an ongoing cycle. And that's why it's not hard to uh, understand reincarnation. All right. It's a, like a recycling uh, thing that goes on. The Most High created all the spirits from the very beginning. Not saying that the Lord can't create new spirits now, but why would the Lord create new spirits when he already created the spirits? Whether it's the spirit of a man, whether it's the spirit of a bird, whether it's the spirit of a fish, whether it's the spirit of an animal. Every, everything that has existence, any element, has a sort of spirit. All right? He that got ears to hear, let him hear. All right? So it says, And another generation cometh, but the earth abide forever. All right, so the earth is always going to be here, and it's always going to abide forever. So that proves that that um the earth would never be destroyed, all right? It was destroyed the first time by water when the Most High killed the creatures, but he saved certain creatures by twos. He saved Noah and his family, okay? And then what? He made a promise to Noah, and this is why when it rains, you know, you can also see... A rainbow the rainbow uh originally created was a promise to noah that he would never flood the earth again all right but this second death is going to be by the way of fire and when you look at it water was a cleansing mechanism cleansing agent and then you got fire which is a cleansing agent but the lord didn't say he was going to destroy the whole world the world is not going to end by a by a uh, another planet colliding with earth all right, um, the earth um, going into an ice age or whatever you call it, or um, the sun is going to get closer to the earth. No, the fire in which that's going to destroy this society, this age, the fashion of this world is by the way of World War III, which is the way of nuclear destruction. All right, and what's going to be destroyed mainly, okay, ultimately, I should say, is America. All right, Babylon the Great. And you're going to have different other parts and other places that do get hit with missiles. But ultimately, the land of North America is going to be a desert place, man. And this is this is music to the, those of the whole four elect because this is what we look for. We look for a new heaven, man. We look for a new earth, which establishes righteousness, man. All right. All right. So this is verse two. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the Most High out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. All right, because Yahweh Shai, when he returned, he's going to be married. All right, once again, married to the elect, which really is Israel, married to Israel. Okay, so it's sort of like a wedding because why? The Lord would never leave us. Okay, the Lord would never have to die, never have to go and sacrifice itself again. Meanwhile, you know, we would never die. We would never be in absence of the Lord as we are now. The Lord is his his physical presence is not here, but his spiritual presence is. But, you know, we would never be in absence of him. All right. He's always going to be with us, just like the heavenly father. All right. All right, so it says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the Most High out of heaven. 
prepared as a bride adorned for her for her husband. All right, so you know, you can imagine, you know, what John saw, man. Something so beautiful, you know, that he had to put it in just these words. Because I'm pretty sure the details were probably hard to describe in what he saw, you know. So what he saw, man, is uh, is the kingdom being established. Seeing the Lord and the angels, all right. Seeing Yahweh Shai crack those clouds, man. It says, verse 3, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and the Most High himself shall be with them, and, and be their power, be their God. All right? And who is that talking about? The Israelites. He's not talking about any other nation. He's not talking about Edomites. He's not talking about Moabites. He's not talking about Hamites and Japhites. Okay? He's not talking about Elamites. All right? He's talking about the Israelites. Let me read again. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle, which is the house, the house of the Most High, Yahweh, is with men. Okay, why men? Because that is the head of the house. Women are not the head of the house. Men are. And that's why when you read in Isaiah 13, the Lord said, matter of fact, let me get it real quick. This is um Okay, we Isaiah. Okay, this is Isaiah. Hold on. Isaiah chapter 13. And verse 12, the Lord said, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophri. Okay? So, the men are the precious, not women. Not according to the Heavenly Father. Okay? Not according to the Bible. It says, I will make men most, more precious than fine gold, which is the man, not the woman. All right? Now, let me get back. So Revelations 21 and um, verse 3, it says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men. And that's why the men are the prophets. The men are the teachers. The men are sent out to gather the elect through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and his gospel of his word. All right. It says, And he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, his people. Okay, you can't Esau make these TV shows and they give the illusion that, you know, there's all different sorts of different nations that's able to be God's people. No. All right. We're divided by nations. When you were born, you were born to a nation. You wasn't born to be with everybody else in the world you was born to your particular race your race is determined to who you are what nationality are you and your your nationality is determined by the seed of your father whatever your father is is what you are all right because a lot of you jokers you know you get pissed off when we say that the lord is only uh for the israelites and that's true he is the gentiles are israelite foreigners okay they were israelites that were scattered they were Israelites that were Hellenized, okay? They grew up and they thought, and they, okay, they thought, they, 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 uh, they, they, they used the customs of the heathens and they lived as a heathen. But the seed of them, okay, and they, uh, was, was what? An Israelite, man. Okay, an Israelite foreigner. That's what they were. And that's who Paul was sent to. It says, um, and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and the most high himself shall be with them and be their God, which means be their power. All right. Right now, we you know, have no power because we sinned against our power. And this is why Jake is in the, in the condition that they are today. The curses are on our necks, man. All right. And this is why it's very important. The scriptures say, seek the Lord while he may be found. 
All right. Call ye upon him while he is near. Because the Lord is near. You just got to uh, knock, man. The scriptures say he will answer. All right. So it says, verse, uh, verse, verse, verse four, it says, and the most high shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And you better believe it, man. You know, there are tears in our eyes. The scriptures say the uh, men of the Lord uh, cry out for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And, and, and what we're headed into is really going to uh, bring forth the suffering, you know, and uh, the, the, the uh, suffering and the tribulation, you know, before the Lord come. We're really going to go through it, man, you know, to fulfill these scriptures. So it says, and the most high shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. Now that's music, man. All right. Because Israel need a savior and this is our savior. This is what our God, our father have told us what's going to play out in the future. Okay. You Edomites are going down, man. You know, it says no more death. So that proves that we're going to be gods, as is written in Psalms 82. Ye are gods. We're going to be gods with a lowercase g unto you other nations. All right. We're going to be walking gods on this planet. Esau, Edom, and these elites, the Rothschilds, you're not gods. All right. You're, 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 you're the lowest among the heathen. All right. You, you outside the temple. You can never be a God. Matter of fact, the scriptures say the Lord loved Jacob, but hated Esau, man. Okay. And I could, I could go as far and say that shit. Hey, you know, I mean, well, Lord willing, I'm able to say that we won't, if we won't die, we won't bleed. <laughs> the Israelites won't bleed in the kingdom, man. You know, we can't, I, I, hey, I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, hey. We might not be able to bleed, you know, take a knife across, you cutting, make, cutting, making food and chopping up food and you won't ever cut your hand. You know, Israel won't leak a, a single ounce of blood, man, and spill their blood upon the earth. All right. So it says, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. And I can't wait for that, man. Verse 5, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. So this is what our faith relies in, man. When we say we have faith and we're crying out to the Lord, this is what the Lord is offering us in the deal, man. That's why it's important to be adopted back. How, how wouldn't you want to be adopted back? You know, we were put away. All right. We was disowned, man, you know, for being rebellious, rebellious sons and daughters. We was rebellious sons and daughters and, and our heavenly father disowned us, man. And who raised us today? Who who's your daddy? <laughs> Esau, man. That's why Jake run around here and they got blind hair. These black women got blind hair. The Hispanic women go out and dye their hair blind. You know, you got these um, niggas. These black men, and Hispanic men, uh, you know, pan sagging, you know, uh, adulterers, ignorant as all hell, you know, no sense, you know, gang bangers, robbers, murderers. Because why? Esau raised you, man. Our father is a father that a father that governs the universe, man, and he disowned us, man. So, so it's even more important that we get back. And guess what? The elect, they're going, they're going back, okay? The Most High is, is bringing them back, all right? Just to establish the kingdom and earth as he promised to our forefathers, man. Whether you two-thirds of our people don't care for it. Well, guess what? The Lord established a, a great uh, a cluster of great, of great men to himself, you know, so that what? Israel won't die off, man. You know, we look like we we shot dead, but guess what? They, we're still breathing, and there's still hope because the Lord's word is out here, man. The Lord's gospel is being taught through the four corners of the earth, man. All right? We have hope. We're not Tupac, okay? 
We're not screaming hopeless and 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 and, and uh predict and uh prophesizing our deaths, you know, as it as if we want to die. We want to live, man. Okay, you know him and Biggie. You know I'm going off track, but hey, him and Biggie, they both was uh, fascinated with death, man. You know, Tupac did all those uh those uh songs. And, and, you know, made himself to what he called Machiavelli, somebody who faked their death and to live his legacy on and live through his music as he physically not here. He did a good job, though, you know, because some people still today believe he alive. I mean, me, myself, <laughs> I kind of he could be. Who knows? You know, but right now he's dead, man. All right. And people still listen to his same songs, man. And he's still. Is a mystery to his death and everything and everything, man. Same thing goes, well, not exactly with Biggie, but, you know, Biggie also prophesies his death and he's ready to die and all this. Look, man, we 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 have hope in Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. We're not hopeless. Anyway, Revelation 21, 5, and he, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I will make all things new. And he said unto me, Write. For these words are true and faithful. And that's one thing you can count upon Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. That when he says something, it's gonna be done. Okay, you could bet you can you can bet that. When the Lord say it, it's gonna get done. The Lord is not a man that lie. The Lord is not a uh, one to repent, neither. Okay? When the most high says something, it's gonna be done. Alright? Verse 6, and he said unto me, it is done. <laughs> I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. <laughs> Yahweh Shai also said that, man. <laughs> Matter of fact, let me go to that. I believe that's John 10 and 10. It says, the thief cometh not, but to steal and to kill and to destroy. And we know who that is. That's Esau. What Esau done in this land, man? Ahasuerus, which this land was called, called Ahasuerus, okay, before he came here and called it America. All right? It says, The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. And that's exactly what Edom have done. Now we're in the, the time of 2020. And Donald Trump is the president of the United States. He's the king of Babylon, the great right now. Okay. And what they have done as far as them establishing this place and their whole rap sheet, they have killed. They have stolen people. They have stolen. And they have destroyed. All right. But Yahweh Shai say, I am come. See, this is why we need the Lord. This is why Yahweh Shai must return. Baba Kusha, Baba Kusha, Baba Kusha. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. The water, the water, the water, the water, the water. The Lord Yahweh Shai got to come, man. He says, I am come that they might have life. Because we're not living the life. We're not living, man. You're going to work nine to five. You, you're going through the motions every year. You're dealing with Satan and demons. Okay. You, you're dealing with... um. You know, the plague, the curses that's upon us. Your people ain't right. You know, you're getting older. You know, you might start getting the infirmity. Depends on what, you know, you ain't taking care of yourself. But eventually these bodies are sinful. So obviously they're going to they're gonna uh, uh, lose its uh, prime. You know, we, you, you're going to be uh, rusty, man. You know, you're like a, a chain. A chain that be out in the, in the rain all day and eventually your chain get rusty. You know, basically what the scriptures say, uh, they, they will wear out the saints of the most high. All right. So we need Yahweh Shai, man. We need to live a life, a real life where we can not worry about the dangers of this place, the dangers of our enemies, man. You know, your child growing up, you you trying to teach him to play ball, you know, so he can what? Play basketball and then he go into college and further uh, live on for this society. This society is shot dead, man. This society is finished. You know, what hopes could you have here? You have to have. You have to be have a strong delusion, you know, to believe that you're gonna be something in this place. 
You know, this 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 place, you know, this world, this fashion of today don't really have that long left. You know, only the ones that can actually see and understand can see that. That's watching current events and knowing what's going on, knowing we're living in Bible prophecy. All right. So anyway, it says, I am come that they might have life. And that they might have it more abundantly. You know, we need life abundantly, man. Not worried about, you know, scrapping a little bit of change you got, paying bills, you know, getting ripped off. But you conditioned to being ripped off. So it's like it is what it is, you know, getting taxed on everything, man. You know, you know, you, abundantly. Exceeding some number or measure or rank or need over and above more than is necessary. Super added. <laughs> Whoo, man, that's exactly, man. We're going to have more than a heart could wish for, man. The scriptures say, the Lord said, Yahweh Shai said, in my father's house, there's many mansions. All right. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. You know, and what are the many mansions? We know that the mansions are different planets, you know, so over and above. More than is necessary, you know, right now we just have what's necessary, you know, be thankful. That, and that's that's the humbling, 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 thing, a humbling way that the Lord has the men, man, of the Lord, because we are truly thankful for what we have that's small. So be thankful for the small things, man. Okay, the necessary things, I should say. You know, a roof over your head, having some change in your pocket, your health, you know, clothes on your back, being able to fellowship with the brethren, camp, being able to go out there and camp and prophesy and make your home safe, man. You know? So we have to be thankful, man. All right? And that's beautiful that we 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 cherish to we cherish the small things now because in the kingdom we're gonna have it abundant abundantly, man. We're gonna have more. It says over and above, more than is necessary. So when you have resources that's uh over the limit, you know, you playing around with it, man. You start playing with it, you, you know. You're doing whatever it is you want with it because you have unlimited resources. That's what we're going to have. That's what the elect is going to have in the kingdom, which is here on earth. Okay? When Yahweh shall return, he's going to give us unlimited resources, man. Make us gods to where we won't die. We won't bleed, man. We won't see sorrow. We won't see death. All right? We won't be, um, uh, we won't ever have a disease and be sick. We're never crying ever again. All right. It says exceedingly, abundantly, supremely. All right. Something further, more, much, more than all, more plainly. Superior, extraordinary, surpassing, uncommon. Yeah, it's uncommon to have unlimited resources, man. Not everybody can have that, man. Advantage, yes, you know, more excellent, right? Uh, anyway, that's the point. So, John 10 and 10, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. All right, so let me get back to Revelations because uh, Yahweh Shai said that. So this is Revelations and 6, 21 and 6. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, which is the Heavenly Father. The beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his power, his God. And he shall be my son. You see? That's why when the Lord chastened us, matter of fact, let me get that. 
you know, we're supposed to take it cheerfully. All right. Because this is what the Lord said. This is Hebrews chapter 12 and 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto sons. I'm not, I'm, I'm going to try my hardest to not say children anymore because it's really not children. It's really sons and daughters. All right. So let's read that again. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto sons. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. So when the Lord rebuke you, take it cheerfully because the Lord is looking out. It is better that you have a parent when you're young to guide you, to uh, tell you what's right or wrong, than to let, you know, a parent allow you to do any and everything you what it is, you know, because why? You will learn later to not go through all the hurt. You can avoid the hurt, all right, by your mistakes, okay? By your mistakes early on because someone is over you chastising you. And ultimately, the Heavenly Father is doing that to the hopeful elect. So it says, my son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. Don't despise it. Embrace it. Channel the energy into something to positive, man. You know, it's all about our faith. You got to keep the faith. You know, channel your energy when you're down and you're going through it and you've been tribulations and, you know, whatever it is. Channel the energy to, to, pos to positivity, man. You know, hey, that's the Lord busting my ass, man. I did something wrong, fuck it. I don't know what I did wrong. Maybe it was something in my past life, but the water you how about me, I was shot. I know you're going to make a way for me to escape, right? So it says, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. You know, now that's easier said than done. But you got to be, you got to strive, man. You got to strive in that direction to keep the faith. Verse 6, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, okay? And, this, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. So when you're catching hell, you know, because you, you should be afraid if you're not catching hell. I tell you that. If you got everything going for yourself, you know, you ain't catching hell at the job. You got all this money. Your bills is paid. <laughs> you know, your family's good. You, your wife is great. And you ain't never catching hell. That's scary, man. That's scary. You know, we get to the point where, you know, you catch hell so much. When you ain't catching hell, you start feeling funny. What's going on? Or what's doing something wicked? You know? Because really, when you when you uh when you down and you always uh uh uncomfortable, you know, you, you get used to it. You know, so when someone wanna do something nice, it's kinda weird. You know, you're like, nah, nah, nah. You know, it's weird. Like cause you're uncomfortable all the time. And that's a beautiful thing to be uncomfortable because this world is cold. We have to learn to be uncomfortable when these pressure, these these darkest hours to come, all right. So when someone do something nice, and whatever situation it may come, it's weird, you know, like the fuck, you know. But anyway, he that got ears to hear, let him hear, man. Um, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, he chast he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. So whoever he receiveth, he chasteneth him. He 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 get in that ass, man. All right. He going to make sure that you good, but he going to get in your ass, man. Verse 7, it says, uh, if ye endure chastening, the most high dealeth with you as with sons. For with son is, for what son is he whom the father chasteth not? You see? So if you're not being chastened of the Lord in your, in your walks, you know, and everything is cool, fine and dandy. You ain't got no problems, you know. Passover season come up, you flying colors, nothing wrong. You ain't down, no spirits, to, you know. Then what? You got to think, man. Maybe the Lord not dealing with you. Maybe you're not his son, you know. But for the brothers that are catching hell, just know that, look, man, the Lord loves us, man. The Most High put us through this punishment because we went off. Not because he went off, but we went off. So it's only right that we pay for it. And remember, Yahweh Shah said, this is a light affliction, man, when you look at it, man. You know, brothers, uh, the prophets today, think about it. The prophets back then, <laughs> in the past, those that were walking with Yahweh Shah and even others that were scattered, you know, they was, they was off to be about the Lord's business. 
they you didn't have you didn't have have the pleasure to come back home and you know be with your woman, be with your kids, and then go out and prophesize and come back home. Man, a lot of these prophets they didn't have a home. Yahweh Shai didn't have a home. All right, so today you able to go to work, you are able to get back home, your own domain, have your woman, whatever, and then do it all again. You know, make a routine out of it. You know, put it in a schedule. Back then, you had prophets living in caves, man. You know, when we knew we were Israelites going back in the ancient times, you know, um, some of the uh, the children, they were what? They would, they would go with their fathers and they would go into the temples. They would learn the word. They would be gone from their mothers, man, because they would be what? About their father's business, which is Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. Yahweh being a father, Yahweh Shai being a son. Okay? So, you know, that's that's basically it. Um, I hope this lesson was edifying. You know, the Lord is going to uh, make a new heaven and a new earth. All right. Because uh, the first earth were passed away. It's going to this place and the fashion of this world, which which is ran by Esau, Edom, is going to pass away. All right. This fashion is going to pass away. No more homosexuality. No more uh, televisions and his media and current his news, okay? No more rap music, all right? No more adultery. No more women ruling over men. No more children ruling over parents, all right? No more of the fools being defiled, all right? None of you gooks ain't going to be able to eat no bat soup, you know, and eat raw mice, animals and do all them things in the kingdom man or you're going to be put to death thus say if Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai when the Lord rule on this earth all right this place is going to pass away man all right so with that I hope you were edified I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Rechakodash double honors to my apostles and elders of great millstone salutations to the Lord's whole four elect Shalom